Hello and welcome back to another exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be doing Wonderware. We're going to do a Wonderware project. We're going to use the RS Logics 5000 uh, software and we're going to be utilizing the emulator to do this. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want a project to build an HMI screen for. So we'll go ahead and we'll start up RS Logics 5000. Okay, now that RS Logic's pulled up, we're going to create a new project. As you can tell, in this one, the emulator has already appeared, but you can click on the list, and usually it's at the at the bottom. We're going to use version 20. If you don't have version 20, any other version should be fine. Okay slot and rack doesn't matter the processor if you fired up the emulator is in slot 2 so you want to make sure that matches select OK for those of you that haven't done any of uh, this beginner stuff this is basically going to be a quick recap of what we did in uh, other tutorials using the emulator uh, but if you haven't seen those I suggest you go back and watch those you can find those in uh, my other videos so the, we're gonna make a very simple start station I call it start. Stop. MCR. Well, that could be confusing. Let's we'll call it CR1. Okay. That is basically all we're going to need to do for this we can go ahead and we'll just download this to the emulator so it's already there alright it's in run if we toggle start it should come on toggle stop it should stop very good Alright, now we'll go ahead and we'll minimize this. We'll need it later. or We won't even really need it. It's already there. But the project's in the emulator. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the communications. So you're going to want to come to go to your Wonderware file. You're going to open up your system management console. If you haven't installed any of those drivers yet, you're going to want to pull out your device integration disk and install the FS gateway. That's the one we're going to be using today. Alright, the first thing you're going to do is go to configuration. We're going to go ahead and right click. We're going to add an OPC object. We'll call it RS Links OPC. You should be able to find your RS links on your computer right here. RS links OPC server. That's one we're going to want to use. We'll save it. All right, now we'll right click. Now we're going to add an OPC object group. And we'll just call this EMU for emulator. We'll update it at 50 mil every 50 milliseconds. A little fast, a little extreme. And now we're going to want to go ahead and we're going to browse uh, for those three tags that we put in. Here we go. Start, stop, and CR1. Because we're going to want to read those. So we're going to go ahead and browse our OPC items. Oh, wait. Excuse me. We're not going to be able to do that yet. We need to go open RS Links. 
and in RS links we're gonna open up the DDE OPC you have to have RS links uh, cl uh, classic not the light version or gateway we'll go to topic configuration and then we should be able to find the name of the processor and we called it Wonderware Tutorial and we'll match it up with the Wonderware Tutorial we're gonna hit apply yes that's it we're done we don't need any more we're done with it now we can go ahead and browse the OPC items that we need so we'll go ahead and go here we'll scroll down to the Wonderware Tutorial open her up we're gonna select the online version and you'll see there's our three tags so we're going to grab these three and we're going to drag them down here and that's all we need to say okay now when you open up the device items they're in here we'll go ahead and rename the name side of it the item reference this is referencing the processor over OPC and that tag this is one we can change that we can reference inside of our Wonderware uh, development so we'll go ahead and just get rid of this to, to simplify the, these names. We'll go ahead and hit save. And last thing we'll do is we'll right click right here and we'll activate it. And if everything's good and your license to check out, you'll get a little certificate right here. All right, we are done here. So we'll go ahead and close that out. And now we can go ahead and create our our Wonderware Orchestra uh, project that we want to do. So we're going to select New. We're going to give it a name: Wonderware Tutorial. We'll just abbreviate it with Toot. And we're going to use Base and Touch Cab. We're going to select Create. creating the galaxy for us and then we can go in and start our project alright now that that's finished it's 100 percent complete and close and now we can go ahead and connect to our Wonderware tutorial galaxy come over here We're going to create a new derived template. We'll call this Wonderware to it as well. Keep the name simple. We'll go ahead and open it up. We're going to create a new InTouch application. Change the name, we'll keep it Wonderware 2 as well. Alright. Clean this up just a little bit here. We'll move these toolbars around. Just a little more working space. That should be fine. Now first let's go ahead and set up our communications. So we'll come down to tools, we'll go to configure, access names, we'll select OPC, and we're going to modify it. So this is uh, localhost, FSK, you can change the name of the access name to whatever you want it to be. But the only thing in this group that we're going to change is going to be the topic name. Where do we get that? So we'll go ahead and uh, go open up our system management console that we already have opened up. If, if not, if you need to remember how to go there, all programs, Wonderware, system management console right here. So 
We'll open this up. We'll go to the RS Lynx OPC. And then the EMU. And this is what we need right here. Control C. We'll go back to the Wonder Warrior development screen. And we'll change this. So that's our link. That's where we're going to go and get our to our topic. And that's where we're going to pick up our tags. Select OK. Select Close. Now we'll go New. Make a new window. Just call it Main Window. Change Dimension. Give us a little bit of room here. Be replaced. It's fine. We're just going to use it anyway. Just as one. All right. We'll throw in uh, three quick items to speed this tutorial up just a little bit. We're going to select. Uh, if you didn't see what I just did, it was up here. We selected the embedded orchestra graphic. We'll expand the, our the library. I'm going to grab some buttons. And black and chrome will be fine. We'll go ahead and use a start button. Grab another one out of there. We'll grab a stop button. I double clicked on those to bring them out. I, you can, and with the next one, I'll show you what else you can do. All right, now we're going to indicator lights. We'll go down here to lights. Let's use a stack light. This blue one, we'll use that one. Well, let's use the green one. So highlight it, select OK, or you can double click it. And it'll bring it out here. There it is. Okay, this is our start button. So we get a value, and within the default value, we're going to change that. We're going to call this start. We're going to select OK. Set OK. Yes, we need to define it. It's a Boolean tag, so we're going to need to use it as a IO discrete. Access name is going to be the OPC. And then our item is going to be back in here. Right here, it's going to be start, the name of the start. And then it references the processor and the tag. And here it was simple, it was just start. We'll select save, close, go to the next one, repeat the process. We know the stop, that was stop. Select OK, yes, we want to define the stop. It's a discrete. We get there by changing the type. We'll go to the OPC. Save. I'm gonna hit close, and then finally was I think it was CR1. I'm gonna go look. Yep, CR1. Our control relay. Back in here. You can set it up to blank, and all you have to do is write true. If you don't want it to blank, just put false, or you can use a tag to make it blank for different meaning. So this is CR1. Yep, we want to define it. It's the same thing. It's a discrete I.O. OPC, and it was CR1. We'll click Save. Select Close. And we're done. Now what we're going to do is we'll run it. We'll see if it works. If everything, if all the communications were set up correctly, this should work just fine with no issues. There's our window. Everything's connected. We'll bring up this. We'll minimize it just so we can watch it work to the, to the side screen here. These are tags. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it. No, I'm not going. Yeah, should still be able to. Let's squeeze some room out of here. Anyway, the object is, is that when we start this, the control relay will turn on and it will turn on the indicator light. So, we're hovering over the start. Let's go back and do something real quick. Right click, we're going to substitute uh, strings. It says label. We'll name it start. Select OK. Over here, substitute strings. Label, we'll call it stop. Now we'll go ahead and run it again.
I know it doesn't make any sense, it just makes it look prettier. Alright, so when we select start, indicator light will come on because we'll fire the output. So start, there's your green indicator lights on. We're going to stop, we're going to break the circuit, indicator lights off. There you have it. There was a quick tutorial on setting up your emulator and the correct communications with Wonderware to be able to work those two together as a unit. Here in the future, we're going to do some more in-depth tutorials. I just did a real quick one. We'll get into showing you how to build your own Artcaster graphics, how to set up the animations for it, change colors, do fills, calculations. You can do all sorts of amazing stuff with Wonderware. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.